Welcome, we appreciate it. Conquer Divide in the yeah, belly! Hell yeah! Hey! There she is. <laughs> Welcome, Izzy, also to the show of Conquer Divide. I appreciate you both so much for doing this. Could you please... Hello. Of course. Could you uh, both please properly introduce yourself, let me know whereabouts in the world you are right now, and uh, plug or promote anything you'd like. Cool, yeah. Um, my name's Kristen Sturgis. I play guitar on Conquer Divide, and I'm in Michigan currently. <laughs> and I'm Izzy. I'm also the, the other guitarist from Conquer Divide, and I'm also in Michigan, 15 minutes north of Kristen. <laughs> but you have a noticeable accent, Izzy. Where are you originally from? Oh, I'm originally from England. From England? So I've been living in Michigan for like six years now, so it's a bit of a weird accent. <laughs> Did you did you it's move to to Michigan t specifically for the band, or is it just a coincidence that you happen to join them? Um, it was originally for the band, um, and then I met a lovely Michigan man that convinced me to stay. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome! Excellent! <laughs> Excellent! <laughs> Hell yeah! How did uh, first? I'm just gonna start off. The first song I ever heard from you guys was the feature from from Electric Cowboy. How did that feature come about? Chris. Um. Yeah, so long story short, they dropped We Got the Moves, um, like I think it was last September, and we just happened to be in the studio working towards our next record. And I, I saw the music video, and I was like, this is amazing. Holy shit, everybody stop what you're doing. You need to watch this video right now. And so I, I, like, I think I live streamed it on Instagram or something, and I tagged the band. And... Um, one of the members, Daniel, happened to see it, and I can't remember if he followed me or what happened. Anyway, we ended up DMing eventually, and he was like, actually, I'm a fan of you guys. I had your first record, and I was like, whoa, like, no way. Wow. And so it just, one thing led to another, and then they're like, do you want to be a part of the song? We've kind of been sitting on it for a couple of years now, and... Um, a couple we, years? We they, think, they've been sitting on it for a couple years, yeah. you say? Because it doesn't sound yeah, like anything else that they've done recently. So it is kind of right. different. So then, yeah, yeah. So then so, you guys end up flying out there to do the video. Yes. And, what, <laughs> and they had just messaged us, like, what, two and a half weeks or something? And said, yeah, hey, do you want to come to Germany? <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Let's. Oh, it was, it was so crazy. We... The other issue was Janelle, our, our screamer slash bassist, um, she didn't have her passport. And so I had to, like, do everything humanly possible to get her a passport in two and a half weeks. It was insane. Wow. <laughs> it was but, like, down, so, I think it was down to, the, to the, the last day. Like, the day before she flew out, she got the passport. <laughs> did you have a plan B just in case she couldn't fly or just she just wouldn't be angles, video angles or something? Yeah, I think we we would have figured something out, but for sure that wasn't that wasn't an option. <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna do everything I could to get her there. Yeah, especially because we were doing like the two bands like with each other. It would have been weird just like have Janelle by it herself. So I don't know yeah. when when Kristen has her mind set on something, she's normally able to get it done. <laughs> let's let's I remember, let's she got uh, her passport in Seattle. Was that where she got it from? Kristen, yeah, so, so just so in the, the nick of time. They yeah. used to they used to do um, uh, like emergency appointments, walk-in appointments, um, if if you had your ticket booked. But they stopped doing that after COVID, and so I I had to call like incessantly to get her an appointment for about four and a half hours straight. Um, and I had to wait until like somebody canceled an appointment. And so I had to keep calling and I'd call back and they'd say, we have no appointments anywhere in the country. And then finally, after like four and a half hours, they're like, we've got one in Seattle, but she's got to fly out like tomorrow morning. And I'm like, all right, done. We'll take it. <laughs> wow. But it was absolutely yeah, it was worth it. It was absolutely oh, worth it. So it. Worth it. Let's, yeah. let's see what came of this said feature right here. 
I low key think you steal the show in that song. Don't tell Callboy, but I think you steal the show in that one. So so after after I did a reaction to this song, you guys actually commented on on my reaction for this song and, and asked me to do atonement. And I was like, okay, well let me deep dive Conquer Divide and see what they're about. And I couldn't believe atonement. It doesn't sound anything like that. In fact, that's mm -hmm. where we I finally got to hear um Janelle's voice. And uh, cause she she's kind of not so much on that one, but then she unleashes on atonement, um, and then mm -hmm. and then kind of doing a deep dive on the rest of your music on here on Spotify. Come to find out that Janelle's pretty much on a lot of the songs, lots of screaming yeah, involved. Yeah. Hell yeah! Um, were you guys in any projects before Conquer Divide, and was it the same genre? Um, so I was in a deathcore band. Hell yeah! And another kind of all-girl metalcore band before Conquer Divide. Um, Can you name drop? Eh, no. Okay, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Not, it's, not, it's not worth looking up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was in a couple of, like, local bands um, in England, but nothing, like, super serious. Um, Kristen actually messaged me on YouTube when I was um, studying music in London, and she was just like, hey... I need a guitarist in my band. Would you like to come out? I was like, okay. And that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> just like that. Just one phone call. That's yeah, all it took. That's much. amazing. Yeah. That yeah. is amazing. Uh, let's jam atonement. And then I want to ask some fun questions. We've got some of the serious oh, ones yeah. out of the way. But uh, for those of you guys that are watching, please hit the subscribe button. Support this. Bam! Who, uh, who does all your uh, production? Um... That's a, <laughs> a loaded question. Depends on the song. Um, so we've had production by Joey Sturgis, uh, Tyler Smith on some songs. He's done like I Prevail um, and uh, Falling in Reverse. And then um, also John Eberhard does some of our production. He did the production on this one as well as Joey Sturgis. So it just depends on the song. And that's, that's Papa Sturgis, correct? Yes. Hell yeah. We're, we're very <laughs> familiar actually, with him. He's a legend that's in the game. actually uh, my husband. Oh, I'm sorry. Jo actually, Joey's your husband. Yeah. I, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. I stand correct. That's why no, you laughed and fine. you're making fun of me now. And I'm sorry. <laughs> He's actually in the other room. He's cooking dinner right now. What's up, Joey? <laughs> I do want to play uh, Janelle's part, though, right here, right here so people can hear that may not have heard you. <laughs> So, so while doing the deep dive, I noticed there's a little bit of a gap from 2015 to 2021. I imagine there's probably a lineup change or something, and there's a reason why there was not any music then. Can you elaborate on why that is? Um, so around that time, our, la our first label, Artery, um, they sold to, I, I believe it was it Warner? Yeah, it was yeah. Warner. Warner bought them out and then kind of gutted the label. And so... We were labelless for a hot minute, and then we went through some member changes. Um, so we we took like a two year hiatus, roughly, and then, and then came back. And then COVID's and another then, two yeah, years. Then COVID, yeah. So it was just all of those things. <laughs> was there was there a, was that a good like writing period though, or it was literally just we're all just going to do our thing for two years and then recircle back at a certain um, time? I think we. It was a little bit of both. Yeah, we, we got together a little bit, but it wasn't anything super productive until, um, I, I want to say, what was it, 2019, when we yeah, really started okay. mm -hmm. going ham. That's when we wrote Chemicals and Messy and everything else you're hearing. Speaking of Messy, uh, we had Kellen on maybe like three or four weeks ago. What was it oh, like? What sick. was it like working with Kellen Quinn? Oh, that was awesome. Um, I'm trying to remember how that came about. I think that was through Twitter. Or something. He tweeted at, or he retweeted our song a couple years ago, "What's Left Inside," and he was like, "Get this on Octane." And we were like, "Oh my God, Kellen Quinn, like, first That's of all, awesome. knows who we are, and second of all, likes one of our songs." And so, anyway, long story short, I reached out to him again a few years later and said, "Hey, I've got this song here. Do you want to hop on it?" And I didn't want to say anything to the rest of the band until it became a, a thing because. Kellen Quinn is one of Kia's biggest inspirations. And so when I told Kia that he agreed to do it, she, what did she tell me? She, she went, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> well, I th yeah, I think she cried, first of all, but I I'm trying to remember how she worded it, but she was very ecstatic. <laughs> I imagine so. That's awesome. That is very, very cool. 
Um, another song that I that I discovered today that I thought it was amazing was "Sink Your Teeth Into This." What is that about lyrically? Um, that was about ex band members from a previous band, but prior to Conquer Divide, and it was kind of like. I don't know. They they screwed some of us over, and we were like, "Well." So now the joke's on them. <laughs> the well, joke's on them now. Kind of, yeah. Hell yeah! I do want to play this one also. Sure. This one's pretty amazing. You guys are gonna love it. Is there? I'm sure you guys are getting hit up left and right to do stuff because of the feature. Is there a a, a tour going on pretty pretty soon? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're um, we're touring with Attack Tech and Electric Callboy here in the states. Uh, I think it's what is it? It starts like mid October and, and goes through mid November. Yeah. Hell yeah! Is there is there a particular place in the world where let's say that tour continued and it became a worldwide tour that you have marked like this is the main place I want to play someday? Um, UK for me. Yeah, <laughs> I would, I would probably say it's a tie between the UK and Germany. Just because yeah. we've got a, a pretty big fan base over in Germany, and I mean, it's—I don't know. Is it? Is that weird? Has, oh, but because of because of them, or because of just it just no, happens I mean, to be. Even, even prior to the the feature, um, I mean, I'd say most of the metalheads in the world are concentrated in Germany. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> per capita, so like there in Sweden, so. Hell yeah. That's yeah. Brazil. I'd love to go there. Don't forget about Brazil. And, Bra- and Brazil. <laughs> and Brazil. <laughs> yeah. But so Izzy, you would say though, probably like your hometown in the UK though, or somewhere? Yeah, yeah. And, Extra um, long solo that night, just in case. Yeah. I think I imagine, <laughs> I imagine when we do play the UK, we're probably just going to do a European tour anyway. Like it, it probably wouldn't be worthwhile just doing a UK tour. It could be like three days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's still cool. Still getting the music out there. Uh, what kind of what kind of movies or TV shows? Let's do a little trivia. I have a little trivia segment I like to do. I'm gonna ask you something about any TV show or movie franchise. But what do you know the most about? You've seen this movie or like Simpsons, Harry Potter, Terminator, South Park, anything that's a TV show or a movie. You guys have seen this the most. Where if I ask you a trivia question about it, you won't get it wrong. Or, or I'll tell you what, well, I could rephrase, you're on the tour bus the entire tour, and for some reason your DVD's jammed, but you got to all mutually agree on the DVD that's in there. You can never get it out, though, so you have to keep watching I, it. I mean, I recently watched the Strangest thing, Stranger Things, so maybe that, but I'm, like, boring. I don't really, like, re-watch things too much. I don't really have many, like, favorite TV shows. Okay. I saw if I had to strong arm you, Kristen, what would you say? You don't have a TV anymore. <laughs> oh, gosh. What is something I watched recently? I can't think of the name of it. It's the show about the the, the Satan guy on Netflix. What's his oh, name? Lucifer. About yeah, Lucifer. Lucifer. I like that show. <laughs> Lucifer or Stranger Things? We can give it a try. Okay. We'll give it a try. Give me a second to look up a question. Maybe. We're going to start with Stranger Things. On the first season, oh god! What is the name of the boy who vanishes in Hawkins, Indiana? Pretty much oh. the whole season. Do you know his last name? Byers. Is that it? That no. is correct. Give me a hell yeah! Will Byers is correct. Well done. Yeah. Don't worry about that. I'll do that. I'll do that in a minute. Don't. Worry. I had I had somebody on the show recently that was like extra Christian and the wheel landed on like something crazy and I was like don't worry about that I won't. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> but uh, dang it, you got it. Well done. Uh, do you, Thank you do you do either of you have let's say let's say all of a sudden you have like infinite money out of nowhere for just for whatever reason and you can just blow it on crazy toys. What what would be a dream car that you would buy? For me, probably just a Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to have a Tesla. I mean, it's got a DAW in it. You can make music in it. It has a DAW in a Tesla? I never yes. knew that. Yes. We So uh, Kia recently got married, and we rented what? a Tesla um, to drive it to her wedding. And 
we found out there was a DAW on it, so Joey starts making music in the car, <laughs> like while That's we're at crazy. the charging station. I'm like, this is insane. Like, is I don't know. Crazy. Cool. Is is Joey busier than ever lately? I, I imagine he's always mixing oh, yeah. and recording and doing he's all always, this. He's always grinding. <laughs> Hell yeah! You guys are probably running out of rooms of gold plaques around around the walls. I would imagine by this point. <laughs> <laughs> For real. I mean. <laughs> Uh, have you, is there is there somebody that you've wanted to have on a Conquer Divide song? Maybe a, a feature just didn't work out like timing wise and or a label didn't clear it for some reason? Um, no, but I mean, there are definitely plenty of artists we'd, we'd love to collaborate with. I mean, yeah, I would love to get Ollie Sykes on a song. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there into the universe. <laughs> my, my favorite um, singer right now is Rory from Daysika. He has such a good voice. Yeah, Rory, I, yeah. Rory is amazing. So is Ollie. Two fantastic mm -hmm. suggestions. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help put, I'm gonna put in the universe too also. Good, good vibes. Well, and Chris from Motionless and White. I got to throw that one in there too. All three. Yeah. All three. All three. Great suggestions. <laughs> Uh, I'll just do a couple more questions and we'll let you ladies go. Is there a particular song that maybe isn't in the set that you currently play that is really, really powerful, important to you that you'd like us to play today? But maybe one of the more non-popular ones. What do you think, Izzy? What do I think? So, like, it would be... It would be the unreleased ones, but um, albums coming soon. Um, Excellent. What we don't Excellent. have in our set, what we don't have in our set um, anymore, but used to be quite fun, um, was self destruct. That one was quite fun. That was a fun one to play. But all the ones, all the music that I'm kind of digging that we have is our unreleased stuff. <laughs> so is it... unfortunately, we can't play that to you, for you today. But is there it's is there a tentative time frame on the release date we're hoping spring cool. but we don't have it we don't have a date gotcha yet, so. we'll, we'll keep fingers crossed for spring for sure let's jam self-destruct and then i'll I just have one final question after that and we'll let you go and sure. i really really appreciate your time thanks for having do you think that people are expecting the f boy sound on the album you're coming out with or are you, I don't want to give away what your secrets are because I don't know your secrets, but are, is it going to be, <laughs> I imagine it's going to be pretty heavy, but, uh, but does the, I guess I'll say, does the success of that song lead you to now make somewhat more pop records than normal? Like more poppy than, than. Um, I wouldn't even necessarily say it's um, based on like success. Just personally, Kristen and even the rest of us are, styles have changed, like our tastes have changed, and that's kind of reflected in our songwriting. Um, our, our sound, like if you listen to the first album, it's all the way back in 2015, and a lot of those songs were written like prior to me joining the band. So that's like pre-2015, I'm uh, sorry, 2013. Um, so our sound is just way more updated now. Like if you listen to like Chemicals, Messy, Atonement. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you're still gonna get some very heavy stuff yeah. on the upcoming yeah. record. Yeah. It's just a little more, you know, updated, as she said. I got you. And totally makes sense. Chemicals, chemicals is mid range. Um, messy was kind of poppy. Um, Atonement is like a little bit heavier than Chemicals, but we have songs on the album that are heavier than all of those. We just haven't released them yet because we like to release kind of like the mid range ones as singles. Yeah. Well, when it's time for the extra, extra heavy ones to come out, please let me know and I'll throw the horns up for you right away. The final oh, yeah. question I have for you ladies uh, is, I ask every single artist that we have on the show the same, the same final question. What is a piece of musical advice that someone has given you that you're willing to share that kind of changed the game for you? Or a terrible mistake you made early on in your musical career that you don't want any starting up band to make? I have one about a mistake that I did. Um, so I think this this was really when I was kind of trying to write riffs by myself, like before Conquer Divide. I would just kind of like hammer out one riff and just kind of not accept changing it at all. Like I've just be kind of like 
um, tunnel vision on one riff and I wouldn't want to change it at all. Um, and I would just be hell bent on finishing one song instead of kind of moving on or just being like, hey, if this isn't really working, let's change it. So I'd say yeah. like, don't be precious about ideas. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's good advice. Taught me that because um, now when we're writing, we'll just like kind of cycle through like dozens and dozens of riffs for just like one little section. Yeah. And now I've kind of learned to be like, they're just riffs. Don't be like super precious. <laughs> right, right. Share them, share them, experiment, yeah. mess around, yeah, get exactly. outside the box every now and then. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be um, a quote that I like. It's that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And when I started out in the industry, I wasn't necessarily the most naturally gifted musician or, you know, even as a songwriter. And it's just a skill that I I learned after working really, really hard, reading as many books as I could and and just practicing over and over. And eventually, you know, I got better at it. Um, a lot of that actually was a, a kick in the ass I got from Joey when I first sent him my demos and he was like, this is all shit, <laughs> rewrite it. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so, you know, some people might take that uh, the wrong way and, and give up. But for me, it, it drove me to become better. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah, so. Excellent. Do you think Joey would ever, ever be down to do something like this that you just went through? Not so bad, right? Minus yeah. the landing on the yeah. bong rip and stuff like that. Cool. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. I could ask him. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, Kristen, Izzy, we wish you nothing but success. Please stay safe on Thank the you. road. Congratulations on the album. Hopefully coming out in spring. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Please let me know when the ultra, okay. extra, extra metal heavy song is ready to go. I would love to do a reaction to it. But you ladies were absolutely awesome. We really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having yeah. us. Izzy appreciate and Kristen it. of Conquer Divide. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so if much. If you want to come over, Jonathan's here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>